everybody, welcome back to the Cool Kitchen. And today's recipe is really quite special. It's sourdough bread. And this first episode, I'm going to show you how to make a sourdough starter, which you really need to make authentic sourdough bread. Now, a sourdough starter is essentially homemade yeast, sometimes also called wild yeast. So in this video, you'll be learning how to make your own yeast, which is pretty cool, isn't it? So you don't have to buy your yeast anymore, you can just make it yourself. So what do you need to make yeast? Uh, well, really only flour and water. That's what I'm going to be using today. What's also quite essential for making a sourdough starter and sourdough bread in general is time. It really takes quite a bit of time. Now, it, this doesn't mean that it takes a lot of time um, for you to make or that you have to invest a lot of time into it. So it's not a lot of hard work. It just takes ages because the fermentation process is a lot slower than with normal yeast. Um, so I would really suggest you just try to find a routine in your life to make it work. And a lot of people do this by, you know, feeding their starter, you know, in the morning or the evening when they're at home, starting sourdough bread when they're at home in the morning or the evenings, you know, and then letting it ferment until they're back home again. So this normally tends to work out quite well for people. Now making our sourdough starter will take a few days at least, sometimes even up to a week. Now what you really want to do during this making of your sourdough starter is to establish a really vigorous starter that can ferment, you know, bread relatively quickly um, and that it always stays constant and similar. So I'm going to show you the few stages that you have to do to make your sourdough starter until it's ready to make your own bread. Now here we are at the first stage of making our sourdough starter. Now it's worthwhile talking about containers. I've got one normal tubware on the left here and one sort of preserved jar which is made out of plastic on the right. Now I think it's worthwhile saying that it's better to use one of these tubowares, something which doesn't create a vacuum, uh, which, well this one will. And the problem with that, and I know this from practical experience, is that it can explode. Uh, or when you open it, the whole sourdough starter will just go all over the kitchen and create a big mess. So I think it's better to use uh, plastic or glass, whatever, or a container, just with a normal lid, which doesn't create a vacuum. And here we have the raw material for our starter. Now a sourdough starter is essentially just flour mixed with water. You could also add sugar or honey, but it's not really necessary if you have a good culture going on. So what I like to use is one half uh, white bread flour for my starter and one half whole grain flour. And I'm using rye flour actually for this starter because I really love the deep flavor of rye flour. It has a certain sour flavor which uh, it works perfect for sourdough really. It really enhances that sourdough flavor actually. So I add one half cup of just white bread flour and one half cup of rye flour, so all together one cup of flour. And uh, now I'm adding one and a half cup of lukewarm water and just mixing it with a whisk. So here's our finished mixture. So it looks very much like thick pancake batter. Um, and now the reason I used half whole grain and half um, white flour is really because also the whole grain is a lot more active. Uh, than white bread flour would be, so it will form a natural yeast very quickly, and that is really, you know, uh, what sourdough is, natural yeast. And now I'm just leaving my sourdough starter uh, somewhere warm, preferably and the lid on, um, for at least half a day. So preferably you should start your starter in the morning or in the evening. So let's say you start it in the evening, you come back next morning and see how it goes. Um, and if you really want to, you can check on it every few hours and maybe give it a bit of a stir, you know, with a whisk, because that always helps getting some oxygen, getting some air into your starter. Um, but yeah, and then after this, after this first stage is done, you basically just um, have to feed it every now and again, and we'll come back to that later tomorrow. Welcome back to our second day of making a sourdough starter. So. I'm going to show you what it looks like so you can see what your starter should look like after a night or so of fermentation. Um, so if you just open it and look into it, it's quite frothy, there's quite a few bubbles in it. 
um, and it's actually it actually has a very particular smell, sort of a smell of fermented apples or sort of beer in a way, you know, sort of the smell of just fermentation going on um, and a sour hint to it. So that is really what you want. And if you um, haven't gotten this far in that amount of time, it just means perhaps that your conditions are a bit different, that your starter might need a bit longer. So uh, what I would suggest in that case is to take a whisk or a food mixer and just mix the whole thing. Try to get as much air into it as possible. That really makes a big difference. You know, do it a few times if you want to speed up the whole process. Um, and just leave it be until it becomes frothy and starting to ferment and then you're ready for the next stage. So from now on, for a few days, you will always be doing the same thing every day. So you're going to take your starter and you're going to pour out about half of it. See? Yeah, that should be about half. And this you can use for just other breads or any other kinds of batters you want to make or even cakes. So we're not going to discard it but you shouldn't leave it in your starter. Um, and then we're going to put the same amount of flour and water into the starter again as we did in the beginning. Now this is quite important to establish your starter um, to get a feeding rhythm, you know, so that it always be constant, it will smell the same, be nice and vigorous, perfect for fermentation, what you need to make bread. So that's what we're doing for a few days now until it's quite vigorous all the time and it smells of that particular smell that you only really know whenever you've got it right. Um, and then from then on we can use it to make bread. So it's day four of sourdough starter making for me. Um, and it's finished, so we're gonna have a look. And it looks absolutely fantastic. So this is really what it should look like. It should be absolutely bubbling very active, very frothy, you know, it should come up right to the top uh, and that shows you that you have a really good starter going on and at this point we're ready for baking. So I hope what this video has taught you is that sourdough starter making is not a real, you know, exact science. Um, all, you know, conditions are different so don't worry if, you know, it doesn't work exactly to plan or the way I did it. Uh, just, you know, give it a bit more time, um, maybe, you know, whisk it a bit or put it in a food processor, just add some air, and worst case scenario, if nothing really works, just maybe try to put some sugar or some honey in, and that should really give it a boost. So those are really your guides for troubleshooting, and you should have no problem establishing a nice culture. So how do you keep your starter um, for future baking? Now, if you bake bread, let's say, up to um, three times a week at least, then you can keep it outside in your normal, you know, room temperature um, and feed it the night or the day before uh, you start baking. So let's say I would start making sourdough bread in the morning, but I know the night before, I'm just gonna feed uh, my starter um, again so that it's nice and vigorous for the following day. And uh, now for the future, if you want to feed, you know, your starter, it doesn't have to be the same measurements as before. You can just use half of the flour, so half a cup of flour, of your flour mixture is fine. Um, and just add the, you know, amount of water that you need to keep the consistency. But let's say you only make um, sourdough bread once a week or less, then it is a good idea to keep it in the fridge and if you keep it in the fridge you can get away with feeding your sourdough starter once a week and whenever you feed it um, you know when it's in the fridge take it out of the fridge just stir it up a bit and leave it for half a day or a day outside so that it can regenerate that is especially important if you want to bake bread with it um, but, but yeah so if you just leave it in the fridge that's okay just feed it once a week and finally, let's say you go away on holiday or something for a few weeks and you don't know what to do with your starter. You can't freeze it, actually. No, you can't put it into the freezer. Um, and you can just restart it again afterwards and it should be fine. So 
thanks for watching. I hope this has been helpful. Um, maybe a bit detailed, but that's really what you need to know sometimes for these things. But don't forget, you're the boss of your starter.